Ombre is the word to describe the gradation of color from light to dark. And I'm using this idea for my pink-hued strawberry ombre cake. It may look ruffled on the outside, but it's bursting with color on the inside. We're using the reverse creaming method. The butter is put in after the dry ingredients are all mixed, and you get a really uh, nicely textured cake. So in a glass measuring cup, put one and a quarter cups of milk and four large eggs. Just crack the eggs right into the cup. It's part by hand and part by machine. And of course, use the best eggs, whole organic milk, very important, and whisk the eggs right into the milk. And you can add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, but make sure the vanilla extract is really, really fine quality. When we were testing this cake, I used vanilla bean, but vanilla bean is very expensive. And if you use a really good vanilla extract, you can get almost as good a taste. That's good. So now the dry ingredients into the bowl of your mixer that's fitted with the paddle. Three cups of cake flour, one and three quarters cups of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. Mix this together. Now two sticks of butter at room temperature. And just add the wet ingredients. Add about a half first to moisten the dry. And then add the rest slowly. And now I'm gonna mix it just a little bit more before I start to add the color. It's gonna make this an ombre cake. So once your batter is finished, divide it amongst five bowls. You wanna get even amounts because we're making eight inch layers and all the cake pans, they're eight inch by two inches. They are buttered, floured, and lined with a parchment bottom. We're gonna make one layer natural. Then we're using a deep pink gel food coloring. We're gonna make our batter different shades of pink. So I'm adding like a third of a toothpick. I'll use a half of a toothpick. A little goes a long way. I'll use three quarters of a toothpick and a whole toothpick just to see if I'm gonna get the right colors. So swirl that around. We wanna get the coloring off the stick and stir that. The cakes bake slightly darker in color than the batter itself, so there's a very nice color right there. Now let's see this one. Quite a bit more color in this one. Hmm, definitely ombre already. Ombreing down the line. And now here we had three quarters of a stick. Hmm, very good. And our strongest color of all. So now, Put your colors in the appropriate pan. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. These cakes will bake about 15 minutes. Cool the cakes thoroughly before you decorate the cake. And so now, assembling the cake. Start with the darkest pink, and I like to use a cake round. Make sure the cake round has a little something underneath just to hold it in place. You can use a little frosting or you could use tape. And now, first step, warm a half a cup of strawberry jam. And we want a thin flavoring of the jam on the surface of the cake. I didn't strain it, it didn't do anything. And then a cup of buttercream. This is a half cup, half cup. And spread this. You want a nice, even layer all the way to the edge. Now, the next deepest pink, this one. Another brushing of jam. And if you're wondering what kind of frosting this is, it's a pink-hued Swiss meringue buttercream with a vanilla flavor. And layer number five. The last little brush. We're using a local farm-made jam, very flavorful and keeps the moisture of the actual cake in. Spread this. 
And we want to do a light coating of icing all over the cake. It will serve as what we call a crumb coat, covering all parts of the cake so that there won't be any cake showing through. You could chill the cake at this point. It would be very good to refrigerate for 20 minutes, and then you're ready to completely decorate the cake in a very beautiful, unusual way. The pastry bag should be fitted with a large petal tip, and you can see it's wider at the bottom than at the top. This is the number 127, and it's filled with the same buttercream frosting. Start in the very center of the cake and make your center tight. And a turntable really helps. Just go round and around, and don't be afraid to push that tip down in the top of the frosting. And have a damp rag right next to you so you can wipe the tip. And you can stop and then add a petal, another petal. And what it looks like when you're done is a great big ruffled flower. Very cute. And you just keep going and going and going. And it uses up a lot of frosting. Did I mention that the frosting for this cake is 18 egg whites and three pounds of butter? The ultimate result is certainly worth it, I think. Now, this is the moment of truth. Use a very long, narrow, sharp knife and cut straight down. And now with an offset spatula. Uh, so beautiful. That is a thing of beauty. Enjoy. Baked Alaska is essentially cake topped with ice cream and blanketed in meringue. These miniature versions take this iconic American dessert to new heights. Three layers of rich chocolate cake, which is very easy to make, and chocolate ice cream. So for the cake part, we need one and a third cups of all-purpose flour, one and a third cups of granulated sugar. Put that right into, and one cup of Dutch processed cocoa. This is a very rich, unsweetened cocoa powder. One teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, and two teaspoons of baking soda. Now, sift all this together. I just wanna show all of you why you sift. <laughs> it does make little lumps, but those lumps are easily dispersed through the strainer. So here we have our dry ingredients. Now, we have six egg yolks. We're gonna beat those with one cup of safflower oil. Safflower is a tasteless, clear oil, vegetable oil, that works very, very well in cakes that call for oil. Two teaspoons of vanilla. And two thirds of a cup of warm water. An odd combination of ingredients for sheet cakes. And this will give very, very moist chocolate cake. So now just add your chocolatey ingredients, the dry ingredients. You can see how nice and shiny the batter is. And now it's time to beat the egg whites, which are folded into this chocolate. Using the same mixer, we have six egg whites, a wire whisk. And we're also going to add two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. I'm adding the sugar little by little into the egg whites to get them to soft peaks that are glossy and smooth. Our baking trays have been sprayed with a vegetable spray and lined with a sheet of parchment paper. Spray under the paper and on the paper. I think that's good. Yes, glossy peaks. Now these get folded right into the chocolate mixture. Lighten the chocolate a little bit if you can. 
with a dollop of the egg whites. If you've been wondering about baked Alaska and wondering how it got its name, it was made to commemorate the United States purchase of Alaska in 1867. So here we have beautiful chocolate cake mixture. Now we want half in this tray and half in the other tray and spread it all out. This does rise, so you will have a thin sheet cake from which we will cut our discs that will be the basis for our baked Alaskas. Chocolatey chocolate baked Alaskas. Now spread this, I'm using a big offset spatula to level the batter in the pan. Now your oven should be preheated to 350 degrees. Bake the cakes 18 to 20 minutes. Not too long. After the cake is completely cooled, run a knife around the perimeter and try to lift up a piece of the parchment. It looks like it's going to release. And then just turn this over very quickly onto a piece of parchment paper. You have to be bold when you do things like this. And there, came out perfectly. Remove the parchment, and now we're gonna cut these into rounds. We are using a two and a half inch round biscuit cutter, a three and a half inch round, and a four inch round. We need six of each size for this particular dessert. So altogether, you could probably get out of the two layers, 12 of these wonderful chocolate baked Alaskas. Now, spray a small glass bowl with vegetable spray and line with plastic wrap. And then spray the plastic wrap. And you start with the smallest rounds. These go in the bottom of the bowl. It doesn't matter which side is up or down because everything's gonna be covered with meringue the snow of Alaska. And now a scoop of ice cream on top of the small disc. So now the three and a half inch squares. This dough is like a very moist, almost brownie dough. And now a big scoop of ice cream on top of this layer. Approximately four cups of ice cream for six of these baked Alaskas. And now the top layer. And just press down. Don't be afraid. And you see how nicely they fit into these bowls? Absolutely perfectly. And then cover with your plastic wrap so that the cakes are well sealed and get this right back into the freezer until the cakes and the ice cream are rock hard. So now for the meringue, 12 egg whites, three cups of granulated sugar, stir it in well. We're gonna make a Swiss meringue. And I always add in my meringue a little cream of tartar. A pinch, sort of like that. That helps keep the meringues dry. And a pinch of salt I'm gonna put into my meringues also. This is a Swiss meringue, which is egg whites and sugar, cream of tartar, heated over a bain-marie, and then whipped to a smooth, glossy, frothy texture. And just keep stirring until the egg whites are warm, almost too warm to stick your finger into. Put this right on our stand mixer. Turn this on high and beat until it's exactly the consistency you want for a piping over our beautiful chocolate Alaskas. So now the meringue is done. It took about 12 minutes. Here's our chocolate Alaskas. I can't wait to unwrap one for you. Gently release from the bowl. And here you have your little chocolate cake. Now you can just spoon and swoop. Now look at that, it is like snow. It's like Alaska snow. Then cover all the chocolate. Oh, so beautiful. And so easy. So just proceed and do all of them like this. 
And right before serving, take one of these little torches and brown the meringue. And that, my dear friends, is a baked Alaska. Really cute. Enjoy. We have a wonderful coconut cloud cake here. And not only is it coated with seven minute frosting and lots of big flakes of fresh coconut, but it's also filled with the same mix. We've sift one cup of cake flour. We're gonna sift this first and remeasure just to make sure that I have a cup. This is a very fine sieve, and I decided for angel food cake I would only use a very fine. Yeah, that's a nice cup of cake flour. That goes in here. Okay, into here, three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar. It can also be called caster sugar. And this is uh, half a cup and a quarter of a cup. And make sure you sift that. And we're gonna sift this mixture four times. Now we need one and three quarters cups of egg whites. And that's basically 14 eggs at room temperature. Start beating on low and add one tablespoon of warm water. This kind of helps break up the albumin a little bit, which is the protein found in egg whites. As soon as this gets foamy, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar. This will help keep the mixture dry, the cream of tartar. And you're going to add two teaspoons of good vanilla extract. And when I say good, I mean pure. And you can see the volume is getting up there. This will be a very, very high white, egg white mixture. And then start adding your, your remaining sugar, the three quarters of a cup, your half, just a spoon at a time. Let it beat in. And you want to keep beating the whites until they are glossy, shiny, and certainly not dry. This is a very, very easy cake to make. And what's nice about it is that it really doesn't have any cholesterol. No yolks. So see how nice this looks? Really good. You must have a 10-inch tube pan. This is what a tube pan looks like. And I prefer the spun aluminum. And you can tell it's spun. You can see the marks in it here. Those little tiny, almost imperceptible marks in the pan help the angel food cake to rise up the sides. And you do not butter this. You're going to put it into a dry, untreated pan. And I think we're OK here. They are so beautiful. And I'm going to transfer the egg whites to a large bowl. It'll make folding in easier. I don't remember my mom ever transferring out of her stand mixer. She loved that machine. I still have the original down in my basement. When we got that machine, things changed. It was pretty exhausting whipping up meringues and whipping up angel food cakes by hand. So there is that. Now you're going to sprinkle your dry ingredients right over the top in six additions. Little bit, hold, and you go to the bottom and around, turning your bowl, trying to incorporate all those dry ingredients in as short a time as possible. So you see it's very easy, and look how white it is. And so with very little muss and very little fuss, we've made the batter for the angel food cake. And you're going to get this now into the cake pan. I like this one because it has these little feet so that when you invert it, it can sit to cool on those little feet. Gently plop the cake 
into your pan. Try to not get any air bubbles in your cake. There. Now, using your spatula, gently press, going all the way around. Scrape off your excess. Oh, and you can use the point of a sharp knife to cut through the batter just to make sure there are no air bubbles. That should prevent the problem. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and this goes into the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. <gasps> Which looks absolutely gorgeous. Put it on a tray. And now, this is very important. You must invert the angel food cake pan so that it stands up off the counter. This has little feet, so I don't need to put it on the bottle. But uh, in the olden days when it didn't have feet, we would invert this right onto a bottle like this and let it just cool. Isn't that great? Don't fall. It won't fall either because it's stuck to the edges of that aluminum pan. It has to stay like this for at least one hour. And then I'll show you how to extricate the cake from the pan. Here we have the three egg whites already in the bowl. And we need one and a quarter cups of sugar. And you're going to heat this before you beat it. Uh, five tablespoons of cold water and one teaspoon of vanilla extract and a fourth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now use a whisk, stir this up, and heat it up over simmering water until it starts to really get some volume and the sugar dissolves. So this is light, it is fluffy, all the sugar is dissolved and it is hot. And now you beat this with your electric mixer for guess how long? Seven minutes. I've made this frosting so many times. It is one of my favorites. And today we're not just putting seven minute frosting on the angel food cake. We are actually encrusting the seven minutes with freshly grated coconut. And now we'll show you how to prepare the cake. Off the bottle, cake looks very good. You take a sharp spatula and go all the way around the outside of your cake. And using a very gentle up and down motion. And now this should release, oh it does. Isn't that beautiful? And release the cake right onto the center. Really pretty. Now use a super slicer or some sort of serrated knife to take off the top inch of your cake. Kind of room temperature, this will work. That's nice. Just lift this off. And we want to cut a little channel in here. We're going to get rid of some of the cake just so that we can fill it with that seven minute frosting, which is looking very good. So cut just a little channel here, about one inch deep and one inch wide. Just take this out with your fingers. This gives you the opportunity to test your angel food cake. Now the icing is done. Let's check it. Oh, it's very stiff and very beautiful. So now add a little bit of this to the channel in your cake. Mm. Boy, does that look good. So you see seven minute frosting isn't hard. Spread this filling around. Spread some coconut on this. Oh, this coconut is so good. 
So here we have the cake, it goes right back on. And continue making your cloud. Take it down the sides. And this cake is going to be eaten today. Seven minute frosting doesn't hold up overnight. Mm. It's pretty just like this, but indeed to make it into that coconut cloud, you have to add the coconut. Sprinkle the coconut all over. Sort of can pat it into the sides. And you'll need anywhere between three and four cups of coconut. There you have it. Coconut cloud angel food cake. Spectacular and good. Joining me today are three students from the Natural Gourmet Institute in New York City. This was my mom's favorite cake to make. She could whip up a jelly roll in no time for the family of eight, so we always had a dessert, even if there were hardly any ingredients in the house. It's not difficult to make. There's just a few little secrets that you have to know. We're gonna get right into it. Um, it's six egg yolks and six egg whites. You have to separate the eggs. It's very important. Put it right into the mixing bowl. And now notice the mixer is fitted with a wire whisk. Break up the egg yolks a little bit. Add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. And just add the sugar slowly. You don't have to do it too quickly. And one and a half teaspoons of just the best quality vanilla that you can find. And a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Now I wanted to also point out, this is the cookie sheet. The cookie sheet is buttered completely, then a piece of parchment is fitted exactly in the bottom, then buttered again, and then lightly floured. And shake out, make sure you bang out any excess flour like that. So that is ready to go. So now we need three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. Do you ever use cake flour for this recipe? Uh, oh, my mom always used cake flour, but instead of using cake flour, we're going to use half all-purpose unbleached and half cornstarch, which makes even a lighter flour than the cake flour. And here we're gonna do the three quarters of a cup of cornstarch. I use any kind of strainer. See, this has a few, the cornstarch has lumps. Yeah. See those lumps? So you wanna make sure you don't get those lumps Oh, that, look how nice this has gotten. So there's your six egg whites. Now six tablespoons of your same granulated sugar into the egg white. Keep mixing this until it's nice and glossy. So the egg whites act as the leavening for the cake itself. Instead of using a baking powder, we're using egg whites to lighten and, uh, and also cause the cake to rise in the pan. So look how pretty, beautiful, not dry. Not Looks like whipped cream on this. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah. Now we're gonna fold the egg whites into the egg yolks. So do some, and I'll just use this to start to lighten the mixture. That's a great trick. Now you can do the flour this way too. Oh, cool. um, and I find that, but I always like to sift the flour over. So that's how you get your double sift. Yeah. And you also are just doing a little flour at a time. So you just sift this over. And I think now we've kept it very light and I will just use the rubber spatula to make sure every little bit is incorporated. Go to the bottom and then lightly, lightly lift. So now carefully distribute, look how much batter. Uh, I mean, this is, those, that's from those well-beaten eggs, beautifully incorporated. Uh, with the flour, with the dry ingredients. And it's light and airy, and it's gonna be filled with whipped cream and homemade raspberry jam. What could be bad? Do you ever use this one uh, for like a bouche de Noël, like for this Christmas? Is, this is exactly the cake that I use for my bouche de Noël. So see how nice and even this is? And this goes into a preheated 350 degree oven uh, for just about 20 minutes until a cake tester comes out clean. So now the exciting part. Very important, flour sack towels like this. You can buy these in cooking supply stores. Sprinkle through a sieve with 10X sugar. Confectioner sugar is also known as 10X. And I think, oh yes, beautiful. Mm. Now don't over bake the cake. Uh, you want to make sure that the cake is no darker than that. 
And oh, this is coming away nicely from the edges. Mm, I think this is gonna be a great jelly roll. And I also put a little bit of sugar right on the top of the cake before I, before I roll it. Does that like also this. help with rolling or is that for no, flavor? No, it, but it helps with the flavor. It, it gives her a little bit of a sugary crunch mm. to the cake itself, uh, top and bottom of the cake, you'll see. Now, it's hot, so you want to just turn it over like this, bang. Oh, I think it came out. Oh, it did. Yeah, right out. It looks perfect. Oh. And look, the parchment stayed in the pan. And now sugar it again. Feels good. It feels soft, spongy. So now you roll. And does the heat help it roll? Is that why you do it right when it comes out of the oven? Yes. And hopefully without cracking. And uh, there. And keep the seam on the bottom. There. Let that cool. We have one that came out of the oven a little while ago, and it is already cool. Now watch. And the sugar also helps prevent the sticking. Look at this. Look how fluffy and beautiful. Mmm, yummy. So for the filling, use about one and a half cups of heavy cream. And this is going to be a whipped cream flavored with homemade raspberry jam. Look at this raspberry jam. It's about maybe a third of a cup or so. And this will be very tasty. Mm, look how pretty. And again, buy really good cream. I'm always looking for the organic, of course. I think we have to do that for our kids, our, our own health. Okay, so here we have our whipped cream on our cooled cake. And go pretty much to the edges. Now roll this back up. See how nicely it rolls? Yeah. Look how pretty. And that, this crust, this, this nice crackled crust is sugary. And that really helps with the taste. Now, a little trim would be good. Sometimes people do it on an angle, but I don't want to waste so much cake. So, and I'm not going to waste this anyway, because guess what? We're going, <laughs> to, we're going to eat this. Oh, yeah. There. Oh, it looks very pretty. With a serrated knife. Yeah, use a serrated knife. Use a large spatula to lift this onto my serving plate. Look how nice. That's been chilled for 30 minutes or so. It's, it's good to just let the filling set. If you want to keep your pretty serving platter clean, you just insert a little piece of wax paper all around the cake. And then now you can sprinkle to your heart's content. <laughs> I'll cut one slice. Use a cake server. Oh. My mother would be so proud. <laughs> Look at that. Fabulous. Nice little dollop of whipped cream on the side. And some pretty berries. So here's three forks. Let me know if it meets your expectations. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Want to turn it? Go ahead. Yeah. Mm. And the sugar on the outside, it kind of reminds you of a crinkle cookie. A I know. That's what way. I like yeah. about it. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I like about that sugar. So jelly rolls can be filled with all sorts of things. Believe me, you are going to enjoy and love this particular version, raspberries and cream. There are many theories about the origin of red velvet cake, but one thing is for certain, this Southern specialty has become a favorite all across America. It's hard to resist its deep red chocolate color and tangy cream cheese frosting, especially when made into cupcakes. Let me show you how to make them. Two and a half cups of cake flour. Level your cake flour after you dip two and a half cups into a sieve. Cake flour tends to, even though it's a very light flour, tends to get a little lumpy. And so you want to really sift it through a fine sieve and a half cup. Two tablespoons of Dutch processed cocoa. and a teaspoon of salt. And just put that through the sieve. The cocoa, just two tablespoons, make it a nice dark color. And rub out any lumps that you may have. And one and a half cups of butter melted right into the bowl of your stand mixer. 
and beat this with one and a half cups of granulated sugar. That's a half. That's a cup. Add your red food coloring, and it's a half of a teaspoon. Oh, wow. Isn't that pretty? And one teaspoon of vanilla. Good quality vanilla extract. We now add two large eggs. Now you can add your dry ingredients with one cup of buttermilk. Here's our buttermilk. Again, the addition of the buttermilk, so good with the cocoa, making a very nice, tender cupcake. That's what we're after here. And there's one other ingredient, and that is baking soda mixed with two teaspoons of vinegar uh, and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Oh, now watch the froth. Do you see what happens? It just froths up like that. Get it all in there with that little tiny bit of vinegar. Now that's a very pretty color batter. Put one scoop in each paper as neatly as you can. And this recipe makes 20 beautiful cupcakes. Transfer these to a 350 degree preheated oven and bake, rotating halfway through your baking time of about 25 minutes. Now these beautiful red velvet cupcakes can be topped with just powdered sugar, but infinitely better is a really luscious, fluffy cream cheese frosting. To make it a little bit pink, I'm incorporating just about two or three tablespoons of strained raspberry jam. It'll make it a little bit pink, give a little different flavor to the cream cheese frosting. Pretty, right? And uh, you can mix it all in or you can um, have it swirl, but I like it all mixed in, so it's really a pale, pale pink with a slightly raspberry flavor. Mm, it smells so good. And then just with an offset spatula, decide how much frosting to put on each of the cupcakes and chill them well before you serve them. So this is pretty. And because it has a little raspberry flavoring, you could even put, uh, for a dinner party, a little raspberry right on top. This is the perfect cupcake for pretty much any occasion. Enjoy. Some people say tiramisu has been around since the days of Michelangelo. That's the 16th century, and its name means pick me up, and it's been made with lady fingers, biscotti flecked mascarpone, espresso, whipped cream, and last but not least, coffee-flavored liqueur. To make the lady fingers, not too difficult to make your own, and they're so much better than anything you can buy. So six egg yolks with 11 tablespoons of sugar. We'll let this beat up until it's light and fluffy. We also are going to use one and a quarter cup of flour. Always level. And in another mixing bowl, we have the six egg whites. And you can prepare your baking sheets if you like. We have drawn the width of the ladyfingers that we want to create, and you'll need two baking sheets lined with parchment. So that's beating very nicely. And we have to fold the flour into the egg yolk mixture. You can use the machine for folding if you do it quickly. Otherwise, uh, use a rubber spatula and fold in the flour by hand. So I'm going to sprinkle and that's folding a little bit. That's it. So it's a little faster than with the rubber spatula. So now finish off the folding process with your beater. Just go around a few times. And into this, you're going to fold softly beaten egg whites. Sprinkle with one tablespoon of granulated sugar. 
They get nice and fluffy. The egg whites go from translucent to white and fluffy. So this looks just about the right consistency. You don't want to overbeat. And now lighten your mixture with a dollop of this. And amazingly, this does lighten. So now add some more of your egg white. Homemade lady fingers tend to be softer than the commercially available lady fingers, and I think they're just so much better. So that looks good. Now, the easy way to pipe this is, of course, with a pastry bag and half-inch round pastry tip. Fold down the top of your bag and fill with the batter. By folding down the top, it enables you to not get batter dripping out of the top of the bag. You can fold over the collar and gather it and pipe. Now, these are all going to be buried in the tiramisu, so you're not even going to see them. So if they're not absolutely perfect, don't worry about it. Make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now, before these go into the oven, you must sprinkle them with powdered sugar. This forms a kind of crunchy crust on top of the spongy lady fingers. Now, if you're not familiar with lady fingers, they're a classic cake-like cookie used as an accompaniment for ice cream, mousses, puddings, charlotte russe, and other desserts. They're also known as the Biscuit de Savoie, which is the Savoy biscuit. Let the lady fingers sit out for about three or four minutes and into the 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. And now for the final assembling of the lovely tiramisu. You'll need some biscotti or some amaretti. Grind them up in a food processor. That's good. Gives that little crunch in the tiramisu. And then to a pound of mascarpone, you will add one cup of sugar and eight large egg yolks broken up. So stir this up. And now sprinkle in your cookie crumbs, ground up. And now your egg whites, just make sure that they are nice and fluffy. And fold those in. These are the eight egg whites from the eight egg yolks. And finish folding the remaining egg whites. So this is ready. Our lady fingers are ready. This is freshly made cooled espresso. And to this espresso, add two tablespoons of a coffee liqueur. And you're going to be soaking these quickly in the coffee liqueur. What you want is this whole surface covered with your delicious lady fingers. Now, spread a layer of the mascarpone. Spread it carefully in an even layer. And it has that lovely color from the biscotti. Now, another layer of the lady fingers. And if you love coffee, you're going to love this dessert. So spread this all over the second layer. And when did you say you were having that dinner party? This is the dessert to serve. And you're going to top it next with a layer of beautiful fluffy whipped cream. Flavor your whipped cream with a tiny bit of confectioner sugar and about a teaspoon of vanilla. Tastes very good. And then just swirl it on top. And this must get right into the refrigerator to be chilled for, oh, several hours and preferably overnight. Now the last gilding of this beautiful Italian lily is a fine grating of milk chocolate. Would you like to see what it looks like? Generally, you can actually see the layers of the filling and the lady fingers. This might just be everyone's favorite Italian dessert. Give it a try. Layer cakes took the South by storm shortly after the Civil War, when the first published recipes began appearing in books and newspapers. This caramel cake, with its irresistible combination of tender vanilla cake layers and rich frosting, soon became a southern favorite. In the bowl of a stand mixer, put two 
sticks of unsalted butter, room temperature butter, look how easily it beats. Add one cup of granulated sugar. This is a sweet cake, as you will see. And two cups of dark brown sugar. Pack the sugar. And one, get that going. And a second cup. There. And let that get nice and creamy. And we're going to add six eggs, one at a time. And there goes the sixth. Add to this mixture one tablespoon of the best vanilla you can find. While this beats, three cups cake flour. Not the self-rising kind. We're adding our own leavening agents. A half a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Turn the mixer on low. And we have a cup of sour cream already measured. Alternate the addition of flour and cream. So add every little bit of your sour cream and then finish up with your flour. So this makes two eight inch layers. The pans have been buttered, lined with parchment in the bottom, and then buttered again and floured. Try to divide as evenly as possible. Quickly press the batter with an offset spatula like this. And now we can put these right into a 325 degree oven, preheated, until a toothpick comes out clean. That'll take 50 minutes. And I'm baking right in the middle of the oven. And now for the filling that makes this caramel cake a caramel cake. In a small saucepan, I've put a half a cup of sugar and I am heating it over a low flame so that it just starts to get a little bit of an amber color. And in this saucepan, two cups of granular sugar and one cup of heavy cream. And two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And you can add the butter here too and turn your heat on to kind of medium. Oh, look how this sugar is melting. Ah. And what I'm going to do is add this cream mixture to our simple sugar mixture, stirring all the time. Just add this to this. And that is going to be our beautiful caramel mixture. Stir all together. See that lovely caramel color? Get this on medium high heat, watching so that it does not overboil. The mixture is now at softball stage. 238 degrees. Remove your candy thermometer. This thermometer is going to go down the side of the bowl and this mixture is going to be poured right into the bowl. What we really want to do is cool this mixture to 200 degrees. That's going to take approximately 20 minutes at 200 degrees and use the flat beater and while beating add one teaspoon of the very best vanilla. It's going to take about six minutes to get thickened. And so this looks exactly right. Turn it off and just leave it in this bowl until it really cools. So now for the caramel whipped cream frosting. In a saucepan add a half a cup of sugar and two tablespoons of water. Add a pinch of salt. Now, over medium high heat, melt the sugar in that little bit of water and cook until a beautiful amber color is achieved. That'll take a few minutes. Ah, beautiful. What a lovely amber. I'm going to turn the heat off while I add my heavy cream and just add the cream very slowly 
it has a tendency to bubble up. You can see it bubbling up. And once it cools the caramel, stir. So now we have a lovely caramel colored cream. Turn the heat back on and cook until all the caramel is melted into the cream. And now the cream has to be chilled very cold uh, before you can whip it. And what I like to do is just cool it right in an ice bath like this. Let it sit, just stirring it occasionally. Now our filling is cool and we have to cut this into thirds. And once you've apportioned your filling, you can just roll it into each piece into an eight inch circle. These are actually getting very soft. You could put this in the refrigerator just for a moment to firm up a little bit. But there's one eight inch and proceed to get all three done. And now the cake itself. As it baked, it kind of went over the edge a little bit. Cut these edges off. They're too crispy. Don't throw them away, eat the scraps. So that's one layer and trim the second layer. And you take off this rough top layer, which is almost like a cookie, so dole it out. Now cut this layer into two rounds. And it's really best to turn the cake and make sure your knife that's cutting is halfway through the layer. Very nice. And then you can lift this layer to the rack. And now repeat and do the same thing. And now we're ready to apply our caramel filling. Take this over and lay it on. And release the parchment paper. And I would just fold under the edge. And then your next layer. And the last layer of caramel. And the caramel whipped cream is whipped and staying chilled in the refrigerator. Top this with the last layer, ready to frost. So that's the color of the whipped cream. I love the texture, I love the taste. We want to make sure the sides get covered. Take the cream down the sides. This spreads beautifully and when this is put into the refrigerator, don't fret because it does get a little darker in color. The caramel looks more like caramel. I think that's beautiful. Now just release the papers. And all the mess that's on the paper would have been on the cake stand. And there you have the caramel cake must refrigerate it at least 30 minutes before serving, or you can keep it in the refrigerator for up to two days. Once you taste this amazing cake, you'll know why it has stood the test of time. Meyer lemons with their mellow complexity take classic coffee cake to an entirely new level. Let's begin with the streusel topping, which of course is very important on any coffee cake. In a medium bowl, mix together one and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of coarse salt, and three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar, densely packed. Make sure there are no lumps. Mix this all together and cut in one and a half sticks of unsalted icy cold butter cut into small cubes and cut that in as if you were making a pastry dough. You want this streusel to form nice big fat lumps. So you see as the butter softens, it kind of melts the sugar a little bit and even the color changes for the streusel. 
if you have a warm kitchen, get the streusel right into a refrigerator to keep it cold. So now the lemons, how do we prepare them? We were using five lemons. We've cut off the stem end and the tip end. And you just put them into simmering water. We're going to boil any of the bitterness out of the lemons. And they're sliced into, oh, maybe 10 or 12 slices each. Do this once, remove to a parchment lined baking sheet, change the water, and then simmer them again. So in a large bowl, this is the batter for our coffee cake. Two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Whisk that together, and you should have by now, while your lemons were poaching and becoming more mellow, buttered very generously a tube pan like this, which is like an angel food cake pan with a removable center. And now to mix the rest of the batter. Cream one stick of butter, and that should be pretty much at room temperature so it's nice and soft, and one cup of granulated sugar. This is a very nice, simple sour cream coffee cake batter. Cream that. We have three tablespoons of Meyer lemon zest, grated from about four or five Meyer lemons. And add that right into your sugar and butter. And you can add two eggs, one at a time. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then add your sour cream. We have one cup of good quality sour cream. And add flour, sour cream. flour, end with sour cream. And don't beat it too much, just enough to make sure everything is incorporated. Now spoon half the batter into the bottom of your tube pan. And now put lemons all the way around on top of the batter. You really want to cut through a layer of gorgeous flavor. There. Very good. And another layer of batter. So now the next layer of lemons. Hmm, lovely. And now streusel. And you can do this with your hands if you like. Get that right into your 350 degree preheated oven. Bake for about 55 minutes until the cake is golden brown. And when you insert a toothpick or a cake tester into the center, it comes out clean. So cool the cake in the pan for 10 or 12 minutes, release it onto a rack and let it cool completely. And just before serving, sift one cup of confectioner sugar and mix in three to four tablespoons of Meyer lemon juice. You want a nice opaque white glaze. That looks good. No lumps. And with a spoon, just drizzle back and forth over the cake. You could put this in a pastry bag if you wish, but a spoon works perfectly well. Transfer the cake to a beautiful cake stand. Make yourself a big cup of coffee and enjoy a big piece of cake.